Hi, here we're going to look at, um, in this series of videos, we're going to look at types of organic reaction. And the first type of organic reaction we're going to look at is substitution reactions. And substitution reactions can be thought of as, as where one atom or group of atoms, for example, Y, is replaced by another one here, Z. Now, here we've got a situation where we've got saturated compound, compounds with only single bonds, formed another saturated compound here. And reactions of this type could be, for example, a nucleophilic substitution. Um, or we could have, for example, a free radical substitution. And we'll have a look at both of these in a bit more detail in a sec. So first one we're going to have a look at is nucleophilic substitution and a type of compound there would be something like a, a haloalkane alkyl halide they would undergo nucleophilic substitution reactions and again what we're going to have then is here we're going to have a halogen atom now as i said I'm only going to give a very brief introduction here of this type of reaction. I could do, uh, um, you know, spend a long, long time talking about these, but I'm just going to go through this very, very briefly. So, for example, this could be attacked by a nucleophile. And I'm just going to give this nucleophile a negative charge. In some cases, this nucleophile might not be negatively charged. It may just be a neutral one. And again, the mechanism then may be slightly different. But the, the the idea is that this lone pair here on this nucleophile is going to be attracted to the electropositive centre or the electrophilic centre, which is this carbon with the delta plus. The lone pair on this nucleophile can be used to attack this delta positive carbon. We can show that using a curly arrow. So the curly arrow, base of the arrow, remember, always starts from where there is a pair of electrons, which is therefore a lone pair or the centre of a bond. So we can show, I'll just do this a little bit, the pair of electrons moving from the lone pair and the head of the arrow is basically showing that it's going to form a bond. Oh, this pair of electrons here is now going to be in between carbon and the nucleophile as this bond starts to form the carbon would then start to have five bonds which breaks all the rules carbon's got to have a valency of four and therefore a bond has got to break and it's the bond between the carbon and the chlorine and i'll explain why that is the case remember when bonds break heterolytically the pair of electrons always go to the most electronegative atom in this case the chlorine and that there would give us a um, a compound which looks a bit like this. So now we've got our new carbon nucleophile bond. So examples of that NU could be, for example, an OH minus sign or a C minus sign. Nucleophile can be neutral as well. It could be ammonia, or it could be an amine. The mechanism there will be slightly different. Now, the leaving group here is, or the, the, the group which has been kicked out here is a chloride ion. And compounds that undergo substitution reactions need to have what we call good leaving groups. Now, this is a good leaving group because the chloride ion here is a, a weak base. So if I do, for example, this reaction here, so what we've got here is you know that this is an acid, it's hydrochloric acid. And this here then, we would call this its conjugate, the conjugate base. So this here, this species here has to be weak. Okay, we've already said it's a weak base, which means, therefore, that this must be relatively strong. I'm not going to say a fully strong acid, because that implies an acid which fully dissociates. But this, 
what we can say is that the, the low of the pKa the low the pK of the acid the better the leaving group the conjugate base will be okay so that's why the chloride ion is quite hard to be happy to be kicked out because it's a weak base because the acid here is got a low pKa it's, it's a relatively strong acid this hydrogen is relatively easily lost which makes this a good leaving group uh, an example of I'll, I'll come back and give some examples of this uh, a little bit later on to, to help clarify now an example of another this here would be called a nucleophilic substitution a free radical substitution is another reaction which would occur in this way and here, instead of um, uh, haloalkane, they would be, for example, um, just alkanes. So in this case, uh, this here would be, for example, say a hydrogen. Now, this cannot occur via the same mechanism because we don't have any good leaving group here, okay? Let's consider that all these, for examples, are hydrogens. This cannot really undergo nucleophilic substitution. Why? Because there's no delta positive for any nucleophile to attack. There is no polar bonds. So it can't undergo nucleophilic substitution. No atom is delta plus or delta minus. Okay. Also, there isn't a good leaving group. Okay. We can't kick out a H minus ion. So what that's got to do then, that's got to react via a different mechanism. So, for example, ethane then could react with chlorine via a free radical substitution mechanism. And when it does so, we get the following compound formed. So this is another example of a substitution reaction. And now we get hydrogen replaced by for example a cl and we would then form hcl as my by product so that there would be an example of a i'll just move this down a little bit that would give me an example of a free radical substitution and it's called a free radical substitution because the mechanism occurs via radicals and hopefully you can see that it can undergo a reaction in terms of ions where we're forming ions, we've got ions here and here. Because there is no delta positive on this molecule, and the hyd if we were going to kick out this hydrogen, which you'd have to do here, it's not a good leaving group, okay? Because a H minus ion is a would be a very, very, very strong base, okay? You'd be thinking of H2 as an acid and H2 hydrogen is not a proton donor. Hydrogen is not going to split up into H plus and H minus ions. So you cannot ever really kick out H minus from a molecule. And that we'll see is important a little bit later on. So this would occur via a different mechanism then. And this occurs via radicals where the chlorine molecule um, is going to undergo homolytic fission uv light is going to uv light is going to be shone and it's going to be have enough energy to break that bond and what it does you get homolytic fission where each of these chlorine uh, each chlorine atom in the molecule gains one electron that would form then um, chlorine free radicals so that would undergo homolytic fission remember homolytic fission occurs often when the atoms in the bond have got the same or similar electronegativities. Once you get that these chlorine-free radicals, this can then react with your alkane, in this case, ethane. So what will you get now is you'd get this chlorine radical would come along and what would happen then you can do a curly arrow mechanism then for the next step that electron there is going to 
join with an electron from this CH bond. So what we're saying is that one of the electrons in this CH bond and this electron from the Cl, that's going to be used to form a new HCl bond. And that's how your HCl forms here. That's one of your products. Obviously, what's got to happen as well is that this bond has got to break. And in the process then, this electron in the bond is going to form a radical. Okay, so the result of that is going to be as follows. So if we just copy this, so this here now is going to be a what we'll call an ethyl radical. Okay, so this electron here is the one of that electron from the bond which has moved there. And then obviously we've got one electron from the CH bond here and this electron here, them two electrons now, are going to form your HCl. Okay? So the pair of electrons in that bond, one's come from the chlorine radical, one's come from the CH bond. What happens now is that this is going to then react again with another chlorine molecule. And again, what's going to happen then is that one electron from that CLCL bond oops, and the electron from the ethyl radical, that's going to form this new carbon-chlorine bond. So one electron from the bond and this electron here them two electrons together are going to form this CCL bond. And obviously then this is going to break. And that's going to form a new chlorine radical. So the result then is we form our... I'll just copy this. So that's going to form a new carbon-chlorine bond. Plus a chlorine radical. So hopefully you can see the, how them curly arrows have worked there. Now, we sometimes call this step an initiation step, the step which starts it off. And these two steps here together are called propagation. So we call this propagation step one. And this will be propagation step two. And again, if you can see there, um, in effect, what we can do is we can cancel um, this CL here. Sorry. And cancel this CL here and this CL here because they appear on both sides. We can cancel this ethyl and this ethyl. And what we get then there is this overall equation. So ethane plus chlorine gives chloroethane plus HCl, which is exactly what we've got here. So that there is substitution reactions in this particular example where you've got a saturated organic compound forming another saturated organic compound.